Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinga Show, episode number 314. That's 314. As I get this cable out from underneath my headphones, I'll just stop that there. Hopefully, you can hear me loud and clear this time around. Um, pardon me for the earlier audio issues. As I mentioned before, I've got a new mic set up and a new audio interface, a new little sound card thing that I'm using at the moment. So, I'm still kind of getting through some TV problems, still trying to sort out what works best or not. I'm a bit annoyed that it doesn't just work out of the box, right? It's a pretty expensive camp or microphone, more so than the one I bought previously that worked pretty fine up until a point. But I have to do all these little tweaks inside the OBS. I've got to change the filters. I've got to add noise compression gates and all this sort of malarkey just to get it to sound halfway decent. So I decided to go for the tried and true method and I just turn up the volume on my audio interface. So hopefully you should be able to hear me nice and clear now. And there should be no interruption on that regard. But yeah, how are you guys doing? How are you feeling? Let me move the camera a little bit closer so you can see me in HD. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling a bit tired. I just came back in from a what six mile or so run. Um, did it in about an hour. Well, the whole plan was to run for an hour actually, so it wasn't actually about the mileage, more so about getting the timing. And yeah, it's been a bit of a slog, man. I'm on week one of the How Higdon program, and I'm feeling it. I'm kind of all these runs I'm doing now. It makes making me miss going to the gym even more. I miss just standing there, picking up a bar, you know, bringing it up into my waist and grunting as I, you know arch my back uh back in the form of a deadlift and then i kind of drop it from that height because i think i'm a bad man but i'm honestly i miss the gym so much i would much prefer to be doing some sort of wad in a gym with a kettlebell and a row machine and the pull-up bar and the little dip thing that you have like i'd much prefer doing that than having to do this like even just doing the home body workout things at home is a bit boring that's why i tend to run more often because i usually get a lot of motivation doing that than you know sitting on my carpet and trying to touch my toes consecutively in the form of a setup you know just trying to describe what a setup is but i'm sure you know what a setup is but yeah it's been it's been emotional but i'm feeling it it's all right it's saturday so we can enjoy ourselves let our hair down a bit um, I've not seen that much of a change outside, I have to be honest. Um, we've been a bit lax here in London. People haven't really been taking the lockdown that seriously. People have been going out meeting their friends, so I've heard on a grapevine, which again, I'm not judging. I mentioned previously on the show that I think people need to cut people some slack. You know, this is unprecedented situation. It's not something that we should be become accustomed to either. I don't think we should be happy being indoors and just chilling and just you know whatever it may be i don't think it should become our new normal we should um try to as soon as it's safe to get back to normal we should do our very best to do that um because being indoors for a prolonged period of time is just not in our makeup we can't do it with social creatures we need to be touching feeling you know getting in the way of people and if people want to break the rules and go out and meet their friends and you know drink a bevy or two in the park which is a bit scabby but hey it is what it is isn't it we're all we're all the same now and i bet i bet if you roll if you was to drive by a park a park sorry a park if you drive by a park now you probably will you probably won't be able to tell from afar who the crackers are because usually when you drive by a park the only people in the park sitting there you know fucking around are usually crackheads unless you're in a hipster place right if you're like near victoria park everyone there you know works freelance and working from home and has some sort of cool job title but for the most part people in parks are to be avoided but now you know we've all been you know reduced to this uh to our base instincts we've been reduced to our base operational um systems where all we want to do is just stand next to somebody right feel an ambiance catch a vibe hopefully someone brings a bluetooth speaker so we can get down and just you know throw our hands in the air and stuff like we just want something to give us some sort of sense of normality so again don't be too harsh on people going outside if you don't want to go out stay indoors but again don't be that preachy person that's telling people yeah you should be inside or you know i heard some woman the other day shouting from her car window to some person to wear a mask like this is insane don't be that person just let people do what they do if you if you're doing things the right way do it your right way but don't get in people's way and start you know um being effectively the coronavirus version of those people that preach outside tube stations with bibles and shit i saw a lady doing that today actually which is very brave of her to be honest because she had no mask on or anything so which is fine isn't it to be honest i would prefer it my um if my street evangelist was you know uh, barefaced i wouldn't want them with a, with a with a mask on because then how am i meant to believe in the person that you serve if you've got a mask on if you're afraid of a virus how am i gonna meant to believe in it huh how 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 i don't know who knows who cares but yeah um, seven six nearly seven mile run today just near you know from where i live 
up into an indes indescript location somewhere. If you follow me on Strava, you know where it was. Um, make sure you do follow me on Strava, as I mentioned before. I'm on there. Check me out. I think you can. I think you can add people's accounts. So just type my name in, I guess, as a friend thing, and you can follow me on there. Um, it's working out pretty well. I think there's a lot of um weird undercurrent of competitiveness on there because people are below their runs like daily. I guess right. I think on a Nike Plus that like, people tend to do this thing where they upload it the day after or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's connection issues but i kind of got the feeling that and maybe because it wasn't the feed wasn't um uh what the feed wasn't in chronological order it was just like based on the algorithm so you'd get people's workouts popping up in your feed that was from like you know i don't know four months ago but i guess with strava they tend to have it mostly in chronological order so what you're seeing is what people have done lately and if you follow more people you'll see people posting more so there's a little competitiveness in terms of like making sure you're running making sure you're getting you're getting out on the road consi con uh, consistently making sure that you're running at a good pace you've got a good run time all that good shit i think it exists there so um i'm taking part in it because why not you know if i'm gonna take part in some kind of social media and be a little bit you know a little bit cuck then I should be doing it on Strava because it's in ultimately it's going to allow me to get to my goal, which is, you know, get a base weight of about 180, hopefully top of 190. And I'll be back where I was before and then kind of maintain that. And then I want to get my highest should be only 200. I don't want to get north of that at the moment. I'm currently about 220. So once I get to 180, I want my new normal to be around 180, 200. That would be my kind of range. So on like a happy day or a happy period in my life where I go on a few holidays, maybe a couple of weddings here and there, I'll be 200. And then when I'm just going grinding, doing my thing, I've got projects to hand in, deadlines to reach. I'm definitely on 180, 190. That should be the goal. But hit me up on the old Strava. I'm there. My profile's there. You should see me, all the runs and that. Check it out. I am in the zone doing my thing. Hopefully you should see that on the screen, right? You should see that there. Yep, you should. And if you can't, what can you do? Anyway, what else is next I wanted to talk about here? Let's get into some topics I thought were of interest. Um, number one, to make things a bit, you know, just to kind of ease the tension because there's too much COVID chat on here. I'm sure as there's been another stuff that you've been watching and keeping attention to. So I'm going to crack up in a little bevy because, you know, there's no better feeling than drinking an ice cold bevy after a nice long run. I've got here one of um, Lidl's finest, Prairie or whatever that name is. Is it called? Per Let's try and pronounce it. Perlin Backer. Perlin Batcher? Yeah, Perlin Backer. Premium pills straight from Lidl. I'm assuming made in Germany, is it? Hopefully it is, it's in joy, blah, 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 premium pills, brewed in the corners of German, blah, blah, yeah, contains barley and gluten, made in Germany. Great, so, it's a lunch at everyone. Um, so I saw these, right, talking about shoes and to lighten the mood. Ben and Jerry's um, Nike Dunk SPs. Now, I probably shouldn't give a fuck because I've been quite vocal on here that I absolutely hate the dunk revival i think it's completely engineered manufactured hype marketing ploy by nike to try and reintroduce a shoe that they've failed to kind of help penetrate the youth market they've tried as they may you know when i first got involved in sneakers that was when the whole nike be true to your school thing was popping off and they gave people these stupid free varsity jackets everyone was fighting over and now look where are those varsity jackets now huh remember those varsity jackets everyone was fighting over from nike that everyone was thinking you know, if you don't have a jacket you're not cool where are they now who gives a shit so wanky man the scene back in the day was a nonsense in it they had brands had us fighting over nonsense things they had me and you being enemies because i didn't get invited to some fucking screening on exhibition or some dumb show like bloody hell obviously i'm not bitter about it obviously not right but anyway continuing on this ben and jerry's dunk i shouldn't have a problem with because i'm not going to cut target audience but i'm just wondering what they're trying to do with the whole dunk thing are they just trying to hearken it back to that old era you know early 2000s when they were loads of you know but this is before even maybe the nike sp program was actually launched because that was when the orange boxes were around right not too sure maybe did, maybe that was just before the orange boxes when the stuff started to get really fun really crazy like halloween dunks i'm thinking of ray gun maybe it's like the light side of it um there's a few others i forgot what that orange one was maybe it's a halloween there's a few really silly dunk sps towards the end um, I think they kind of gave up on trying to make it a legitimate sneaker-y thing because sneaker heads didn't care about it for the most part. Um, skateboarders, obviously, they weren't wearing them because they weren't free and they weren't necessarily the best 
like they want the most comfortable shoes to wear it's funny because if you actually ask people that skate like professionally or even amateur they'll tell you that dunks are horrible to actually wear i'm not sure if they've changed the mold or the last now but back in the day they weren't necessarily the most comfortable shoes to wear so coupled that with the fact that you know early on skateboards were a little bit um they turned their nose up at nike getting involved in skateboarding it kind of felt like they were just like you know what fuck it let's just go for high beast they like colorful shit you know the kind of kid that wears like a louis vuitton and supreme box logo hoodie like just thought fuck it let's just target these customers but there's not many of those kids around right those kids will naturally be kids who probably come from an affluent background or maybe have disposable income regardless but there's just not a lot of those kids to go around for those kind of shoes you still need um the general consumer of trainers to still be into them but i just don't know how you could justify wearing these if you're just a casual sneakerhead it just doesn't make any sense so these are ben and jerry's uh nike dunkler sb is featured here by high beast um i guess that's, that's what it says in the tin right if you've ever eaten a tub of ben and jerry's you know exactly what it looks like and they just basically applied that same sort of color motif and applied it onto a shoe um is there any interesting material bits here yep so where the cow sort of print is meant to be there if i'm assuming it's sort of like pony hair kind of um application there which might be a little bit interesting you've got the whole drip on the swoosh there you've got what's that an lgbtq rainbow on the insole um i don't know man i just i just don't know i just don't know what the target audience or what the me or the point of this is but yeah here's a few more pictures of it still looks terrible and again you know my you know my biggest pet peeve with this is just more sort of product shots why did they ever relay shoes properly like i remember when i was working in retail one of the biggest things that you'd get pulled up on from your managers was number one not taking stuff back to the stock room right leaving boxes around when people try on shoes and they want to buy them you're meant to be you know um passing them down to a stock room or going up and or going up or going down and putting them back yourself right so that you've got a clear work surface or work area to kind of uh, maneuver in so that was one and the other thing that used to get a lot of trouble for was the laces on shoes whenever the shoes came as you know from the factory or whatever you had to put a display pair out you'd have to relace them in the proper way which meant kind of if you look at these it meant you take all the laces out from the top towards the bottom and leave the bottom one and then that lace here with my arrow i'm pointing actually that goes underneath the lace stays and pops out that would go over the top and then pop in and you do the same thing on the other side so i follow the pattern um and basically if, if it was on the left hand side it's kind of hard to describe it but basically the laces on the left hand side would be looping over the top and the laces on the right hand side would be looping over the top on that side so it was, it was a whole thing you had to do it was just like a thing and then i guess the third and last thing you'd get out in trouble for was not cleaning um the shelving units and you know making sure things are evenly spaced out and clothes were racked up properly all that good stuff but the laces were a big deal and they made it seem as if like if we they, i remember once being told it was similar to like we had to do it because if the brand owner came in or run re representative of the brand a sales executive maybe or a merchandiser they would get annoyed that we didn't do that last bit right that's the, that was the whole general thinking behind it so we would go our way to do it because we didn't want to get ducked points on our mystery shop that might affect our bonus or our christmas party budget whatever so it's a big onus on it and then you see these brands sending shoes or sending kind of press uh shots to like publications like hypebeats that have got a massive readership base and they're sending shit like this with like the laces all fucked up like it's just not on really isn't it? it looks a little bit dodge personally just like they've made no effort whatsoever you'd want to puff like if you're gonna make if you're gonna try and make these appealing you'd want to relace them if they've got a second pair you'd want to have the second pair of laces on display too so someone can see what they look like you would want to actually lace them in a way where it would reflect the people who are going to buy them right maybe a little bit of a baggier lace style but you want to do something to kind of jazz them up a bit you won't just like present them like this it's not enough right i don't know maybe it's just me maybe the kids that want these are going to buy them regardless but i think i don't know i just think they need to have more customers than just the high beast kids right i'm assuming maybe i don't know i don't know Maybe I'm just completely wrong in this. Maybe they've survived this long, putting out this amount of shit product that they just probably know how to kind of dial it in. But let's read a little bit of the article here. What they have to say here. It said, 
after weeks of surprises, samples and sweet anticipation. Oh, Tybee's writing is terrible, isn't it? Sweet anticipation, come on. Nike's officially announced the release date for the Ben Jerry's Nike Dunk Low. It's B Chunky Dunky originally teased at the f tail end of March. This scrumptious collaboration between beloved Vermont based ice cream maker and Nike's B will soon be served up at skate shops. They need to stop with the fucking part of the with the ice cream puns in it we get it mate um boasting a tasty trifecta of tones jesus they're just going straight for it <laughs> textures and prints this vibrant dunk has been nuts on one of benjamin's famous flavors chunky monkey a banana ice cream garnished with fudge chunks and walnuts bruv can you imagine the amount of corny horrendous pictures we're gonna see on instagram of kids wearing these shoes eating chunky monkey like covering it on their faces getting their very well endowed girlfriends to pose wearing holding the one imagine having the one Ben and Jerry thing over one tit and one shoe over another tit like that oh, so cringe so cringe and it was funny too I bet that I bet there's a a small population of kids that buy this shoe that didn't even know that flavor of chunk that flavor of ice cream even existed they had to google it you know what I mean and then you go and or or cool thing would be if imagine they sell these and then somehow that flavor of ice cream ends up selling out it ends up having to be backdated or some shit that would be wild it probably ain't gonna happen but that would be really really funny if that did happen um it continues here what's it saying here overlays and tongues are built with pony hair okay as i mentioned before that's where the cow print is definitely gonna be pony hair so that's that's probably the coolest bit about it um, I think again maybe for a girl they might look pretty cool smaller feet if you've got smaller feet they'll probably look good on you regardless but it's just I think I mentioned this before to a friend it's just really hard to see somebody that actually has some sense of personal style being able to wear these or justifying having these in their collection there's no reason to have these like whoops whoops service what do they serve like what 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 purpose do they serve what's the point of them or unless you're just that kid that wants to go to a festival which is probably going to be until next year and then you wear these stand, you know, some monochromatic shorts and a basic t-shirt and then you have these as your loud piece in your outfit that might be a thing but again would you want to would the same kid that buys these going to a festival would they want to get them dirty i don't know i know i would i wouldn't give a shit if i if i wore them i'd wear them everywhere but i know the kids that buy these would want to have them looking box fresh and just defeats the purpose because they just look like they probably look a lot a lot, a lot better on the shelf actually you know or maybe as a weird sort of like hypey bedroom decoration in a perspex box but as is um these things are ramped up even further on and around the collar the tongue and the heel are squeaked what's that equipped with puff with puffy ben and jerry style text and the form of which even states chunky donkey yeah what is that chunky donkey linear da, 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 da. As 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 is part of course of the collaboration at Speed Chunky Dunk came up with debut exclusively in skate shops on May twenty third. It'll then hit Nike Seeker stores on May twenty sixth. With a hundred hundred USD uh, price tag is pretty good. I find it funny that they're still trying to do this thing where they push them out to skate shops only as a way to kind of like because I think that was the um I think that was kind of maybe a way to appease the skate shops, right? We're going to give you the exclusive shoes to drive business to your, to your store. But then on the back end, like you're a bit scumbaggy and they, they kind of like force you in order to kind of carry all their core dead shoes that no one buys week in, week out. So you can get the opportunity to get like a tier zero exclusive drop. It's like a golden handshake. If you want the exclusive drops, you have to carry all the other garbage they sell that no one buys. Um, but I guess it's good for skate shops because they get a lot of business, get a lot of traffic, you know, they probably don't make that much money week in, week out in terms of like people, because I guess you'd have to rely on customers buying new decks all the time and people don't, I don't know how long average decks last, but I know mine have lost for a while and I'm just a casual skater. So I'd imagine the same will probably apply for somebody that probably does it a bit more frequently, maybe what max every eight months, six months, maybe you might change it. I'm not sure if it's more. So they're not making that much money on like hardware and stuff. So they're sort of relying, weirdly enough, on these drops to kind of make, you know, a good amount of money. I don't and again, I don't know how much money you would make on them anyway, regardless if you send them at, you know, re the recommended retail price. I guess just a case just keeping the lights on and hoping you get some add-on sales, right? Hoping some kid that buys that picks up you know, a t-shirt from bronze or whatever. 
but yeah um due to come out may 26 so in a couple of weeks um i guess just in time for payday if you're that way inclined check them out um ben and jerry's dunk sbs hmm. just I, don't, I just don't understand what the point is it's like you know if ever there was a case for like you know um wastage and the whole environmental conversation this has to be up here because it's just like what is the point of these existing like why 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 would you do these but maybe it's just me maybe it's me if you do enjoy them get them if you can let's move on the other thing i thought that was quite cool here that i saw just sneaker wise the light in the mood was these nike kill shots actually this is a random one because i remember these coming out when i think it might have been a few years ago they didn't really do anything they might have come out as well part of like a collaboration but they bring them out again which probably makes more sense nowadays because people are a little bit more um down to wear the more stripped down basic sort of like tennis shoe running shoe um nike style thing nowadays i guess maybe i don't know but i like the shoe in you regardless i think it looks pretty cool so this is from hype beast i've got it up on your screen if you can see it it says nike revives its og kill shot in three colorways so you've got here a, a basically white with a red swoosh but i'm gonna say it's a bit like it's an off-white sail colorway with a nice mesh upper which I, this is the bit i love about it the most right it's got that nice mud guard on the front and then for the most part the majority of the shoes made up of mesh which is pretty cool that's basically the old school breathable technology from back in the day just make it mesh and everything's okay and you've got a lovely pine green colorway as well um the swoosh on the side it looks a little bit weird but i'm assuming just because of the way they cut the material or maybe the last and then you've got this lovely colorway here as well which is with the blue swoosh um and then yeah so perfectly good collection of just you know nice colorways done in a very classic shape that i'm sure will be popular with the more let's say um, mature sneakerhead and this is the text it says um one-time performance tennis shoe that found an unlikely niche as a casual footwear thanks in large to the now bankrupt j crew oh yeah i remember true jake yeah do you remember when j crew is it j crew or who's the other what was the other guy's name it wasn't j crew it was like an alan something there was a dude that used to do really good um new balance I'm not sure if there were collaborations or that he would just basically had the option to buy certain colorways from their catalog that were just you know that weren't very popular or maybe that weren't very because i think at the time when i used to buy sneakers new balance shoes they may they mostly done them in the kind of you know funky donkey ben and jerry's colorway that i showed you earlier they'd never it, it was wasn't really a big thing because just think about the crooked tongues nine new balances they were always really wild colorways that was what was in during that time and then over, of course over a period of time um people went back to the archives like the more og um color palettes and color blocking situations and then those who sort of got re-retroed but i remember during that time of everyone wearing more sneaker looking new balances this shop in america i think it was alan something i forgot the name they used to stock really good selection of classic new balances like really nice colors uh color schemes usually no more than three or four colors on the upper like super og sort of stuff um and then i remember at the same time too jay crew did something similar with some nikes too with the ldvs waffle races they stock some really kind of basic um style shoes which again weren't popular back then because people were most likely wear you know stupid plimsolls from brick lane or whatever they may be or vans but um that was a really good era man like you know um stores having the ability to buy one or two pieces or like imagine if you owned goodhood and you only went to stock like vans and new balance in terms of like um athletic sneakers or whatever they may be right that would be a really good way to go about things right you just hone in on those two brands and then you build up a relationship with a buying manager so that you can only so that they give you the ability to only have a certain selection in your store that accurately reflects the clothes that you buy in as well it's a great story to tell but instead that doesn't happen instead you know the same stuff you get at dover street you get a tresbian you get a good hood you get a fucking essence you get a mr porter you get the same shit there's no real difference in the kind of um foot offerings they have for some reason even though they you know the avatar the person or the average consumer that purchased from this site you know they why they vary widely in terms of the interest what they're what they their buying habits their disposable income it just doesn't make any sense but again what do i know um 
So it's continued here. Once, um, one type of performance tennis shoe that found unlikely niches of uh, casual favorite, fancy large button now bankrupt J. Crew. The Nike Kill Shot line is known for its crisp look, um, slick style. Now it's back in its most true to original version yet, the Nike Kill Shot OG SP. Trading out the Kill Shot 2's upper mesh for uh, uppers for mesh and providing a slim, slightly slow build. The Kill Shot OG SP is a return to roots and a nod to the bygone pre Nike core era of Nike tennis footwear. There was a time I think that was who was popularizing um, tennis. Is it? it might have been Alex Olsen, wasn't it? Right? He was the one that was popularizing loads of old school tennis, sort of like indoor soccer models because he wanted to get a Nike deal or basically, you know, he just liked the, the feel of the shoes on his board. I know some skaters prefer to have a really thin, you know, have as much feel to the board as possible. So not a lot of cushioning, uh, no amount of shock on the soles and stuff or unnecessary padding, just as thin as you can get. And there's no more thinner than getting a, an, ast- uh, an indoor soccer shoe and just tearing out the insole, you know? You're going to feel every nook and cranny of that board when you skate down the hill. Um, so there's three different colorways. Uh, the, these are going to come out when it says here. Uh, all three colors available. Nike Lab Kill Shot SP are set to release via retailers like sneakers and stuff on May 22nd. Retail price is $90. Again, nice, good pricing. I would have preferred maybe to them to set around the $80 mark, but $90 for a shoe that you could easily wear, dress up or dress down depending what you're into it's not that bad of an idea to be honest so if you like them check them out <sighs> okay let's move on let's move on what else is next on here that i want to talk about um a couple of stuff in it a couple of stuff what's that I- r.i.p greece is it greece Mueller? i'm assuming right oh yeah it's gone in it so unfortunately you know sad news in the clubbing world but um one of the mainstays in the Berlin clubbing culture or nightlife scene, Grace Mueller unfortunately closed his doors due to a dispute with the landowner. They were, they were going to build some flats there, then they decided not to, then they decided to build them, then the people protested, then they put, then the builders decided to give them an extension, the extension got pulled, then they did the last rave, everyone was happy about, and they released a really amazing, I think it might be like eight hour long set of the closing, yeah, basically a closing set from the last part of Grace Mueller they did an amazing book they put out too that I recommend you check out hopefully let me just see if I can find it actually um, there's a, a book you can buy for them is it Grace Mueller um, yeah they did a really good um, fundraising um, sprint in order to get some uh, coins in the bank so that it can allow them to go out and find a new space for the club and I think it's still TBC as to where the new place is going to be there might be some indication that they've got a place already secured due to the recent live stream with um, Hector Oaks and Ellen Alien but supposedly um, I've been told that that's not actually their spot that's just somewhere they were able to kind of uh, get, uh, get them to kind of stream from but if you go on their site I'm pretty sure they've got a bit here that you can start anyway it doesn't matter doesn't matter let's not go in the shop the actual story that i want to talk about was someone posted uh, pictures on facebook of actually the you know grease Mueller torn down and it's actually true um it's over it's done no more no mass so this is from facebook a person called adam craft under cocktail dear more facebook group if you're not a member of that group already definitely get in touch with them um it was one of their best parties at grease Mueller cocktail dear more i think that was the last one actually they did at grease Mueller too um a very cool party series run by these two dudes i'm pretty sure i forgot their names but um yeah get get, get in tune get a part of the cocktail deal more facebook group so this girl posted these images so she's on a, a little boat trip today my motor just quit outside so i took the assign and so i paid a visit heartbreaking so she went into the grease Mueller site and basically took pictures of the places that i know and love places that i've spent you know many of uh bleary evenings talking to strangers and plotting to take over the world with my pupils all dilated and stuff but it's just sad to see man the actual change in the berlin landscape but i think someone mentioned in the comments that this is part of course this is what normally happens to most great scenes some of the places that you know and love places that you kind of hold dear to your heart disappear other things rise up and other things don't rise up I'd, that's part of the reason why i've been a this is a weird segue part of the reason why i've been a big fan of like hiroshi fujiwara because he's always had that old school japanese otaku um sort of like um sense 
when it comes to design and fashion where he would like start a brand just for the sake of it and then just drop it after he kind of got bored of it or he's done he's done telling the story through that brand the same thing you could probably say maybe apply to someone like a martin margella right you just stop step away when you think you've got nothing more to say same maybe you could say for like someone like a demo bit more as well right you just leave it and go on to something else there is something quite um inspiring about that because there is the other side of the story where people just keep going on and on and never let go right they don't they don't ever think the party's going to end and sometimes the party does end and it's okay if it does it's not a bad thing and it's you'd be you'd much rather be in a position where you decide to call the shots right you're the person that decides when things end when things come to an you know when you start to pull the plug you don't want to be in a situation where the scene decides and tells you you're irrelevant because that would be a really bit pill to swallow in it the same people that you were serving that you essentially thought you had a connection with and i told you nah 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 we're not down with you anymore but yeah these pictures are really heartbreaking the little shed of course so the little gas can or not little but um, the what are they called water tanks or gas canisters on the outside more pictures as well near the inside if you remember walking in here that's usually where the weird lights are bit more of the outside bits i remember sitting here where the benches are this is where the kind of jungle frame was used to be just really heartbreaking images but i guess if you're nostalgic that sort of stuff and you live in the area you can probably go down there and pick up some memorabilia most of it they've already taken and sold on i'm assuming but there might be some bits and pieces that you might find there like this little box here i don't know what that is all the bouncers and then the sign on there where is the after hour wow everything's finished and then look at the, the sign for the beer Heffy shots god damn it man what a good era completely finished but i'm quite happy proud the fact that i had a chance to go there visit cocktail deal more too when it was at that venue um spent many a times on the uh, next to the canal there talking to strangers exchanging ideas adding people on facebook that was always an interesting part of the scene but yeah i guess sometimes some things have to come to an end in it this is the main dance floor as well the dj booth is usually down this end wow it looks so weird how naked it is isn't it it's a shame it's gone but again hopefully they start afresh in a new space and if not i wouldn't be mad at them kind of just starting again from scratch and doing something else um sometimes when things come to an end it can be difficult to maybe restart and end up a banner or in a different space might have the same vibe the same sort of feel so it might be good just to kind of let it go and start afresh but if they're able to find a space that fits their aesthetic and the community are down with it then you know who am i to say in it I would much rather go and visit it again for one more time than have some distant memory lodged in my head for me to access. But yeah, R.I.P. Grease Mueller. Let's move on from that one. What else we want to talk about? Uh, this is a thread actually on the same thing I was speaking about the other day about DJs such as Seth Troxler and Carl Clocks, Carl Clocks, Carl Cox asking them fans for money in terms of like you know so they can support their DJs. The actual video itself, of course, is absolutely hilarious. I think I played it for you guys a few times. Let's go back here again. Put the sound a bit low so you can hear it. Uh -huh. Hi everyone, it's me, Carl. <laughs> and of course no more needs to say about that we definitely all saw that video right these you know millionaire djs asking fans such as me and you to essentially buy what unlicensed mixes from tour managers in order to support them in you know during the pandemic is completely nuts um part of me is obviously thinking you know i didn't even know you were allowed to sell mixes on Bandcamp. maybe that's a thing people have been doing for ages i don't know if they have been doing it and if you have been doing it fair play to you if you've managed to cultivate a customer base of people who are willing to pay for a mix 
that you uploaded on Bandcamp that you it's just it's you know and you're a nobody fair play to you that's a great grift but just seeing some of your you know people you look up to in the scene you know the Seth Truxers and Martinez brothers obviously not Carl Cox I think he's an absolute coconut but the rest of them you absolutely love right seeing them do such a thing you're like bloody hell man how detached from reality are you you know like you just they have no concept of what's going on no sense of um what's that word no sense of reflection right they're, they're unable to see outside of themselves they're just in the moment thinking it's a great idea and again if you have the means if you know it's perceived as if these people are rich and famous which you know they're probably famous you never know they might not be as rich as you think they have they might be have other obligations but regardless it's a bit tone deaf in it during this moment to ask your fans for money and it went on and on it went on social some DJs replied some didn't but what this thread did is collect some of the responses which are pretty frightening considering everything that happened because when you when you actually watch the video it's pretty obvious what the whole point of it was right it's like these famous people pop up you like, oh shit i remember her i know him i know that one right and then the ask is pretty simple right click their bank camp link and download these mixes from these djs like that's what the thing is like that's what the whole premise of it is maybe the whole idea with it being unlicensed might be that those group of DJs all submitted music to they gave them unreleased music so that they could play so there was no kind of conflict in terms of licensing but still it's a bit fucked up in it and then if you read this thread down below this is from the Twitter handle business Tesno uh, <laughs> business obviously spelled the normal way and then T E S H N O I'll link in the show notes for you guys to see but you can hear me describing it so there's a screenshot here of uh reading Seth's statement and thinking about the comments on this woman's IG a few weeks back, which is funny, isn't it, right? Because I think he was one of the people that this is what makes it funny because he's a bit mouthy in it, Seth Trokser, which I like in it. He's of course he's always got something to say about something. Um he's got a bee in his bonnet about Steve Aoki. He was he went to Tomorrowland, he picked up the check to go to Tomorrowland to play a set and the whole time he was there he was pulling faces making it seem as if like he was above everything and you know he's a little bit of a snob he's got his you know he's he's got his nose up in the air at all times and he kind of talks about caring about the scene and speaks up at the IMS panels and shit you know he's really about this life so I think he might have made some disparaging comments you know about certain people in the scene and then for him to do such a you know dumb faux pas such a stupid mistake such a misstep socially it really makes you think like was he just playing a role the whole time and it's just actually who he is or is this just one of those mistakes he made we don't know but they made a little screenshot of i think a reply that he put forward here regarding the whole situation he said i have to say something as it needs to be said oh really what are you gonna say you're gonna speak truth to power you fucking wally he says um this uh, this is people helping each other personally my tour manager is taking care of so why are you in the video this is the thing the hypocrisy about these all they're all the same it's like youtubers they have no ability to kind of apologize properly they never do anything wrong they're always in the right there's always a reason the rationale to explain away the mistake that you made just say sorry and keep it moving in it anyway i read this already this reply but they put that screenshot there and then the next shot here is the uh, berlin company seven trucks are done fire car cocks wait you're getting paid <laughs> that's funny <sighs> but i think this this one thing is in regards to i think there was a um there was a thread or a post for a disc woman where this woman uh uh would you call them a booking agency right right where would this effectively promote uh, pe people of color and women essentially or people that aren't white cis males and they have a whole roster of really amazing DJs. And I think part of the post was them effectively telling the community, hey, most of our DJs, you know, are in a disadvantaged situation during the pandemic. And a lot of their bookings that they had lined up obviously fallen by the wayside. So if you can support by putting money into this fund, it will be able to even distribute it out to DJs and make sure they're okay until things get back to normal. Pretty standard ask, isn't it? Again, it's, you know, it's given directly to the people on the label the artists the djs if you want to support them you can if you don't you keep your money in your pocket pretty simple and of course they've had something to say about it so it's the irony of him now then turning up you know suddenly saying it's not it's it's okay for him to ask for money for his tour manager but it's not okay for a label owner to ask for money for her, for her djs so yeah. mm, all right and then you know of course we've got the whole the whole um, timeline of the situation may 4th 
We've got it's like the Martinez brothers reply was pretty funny. It's very infantile. Hey bro, I don't know who you and again this is disappointing too because I'm fans of them. I like these people. I actually like them as people. So it's really disappointing to see how dumb they acted. But here's the Martinez brothers like, hey bro, I don't know who you are, but I don't believe you have the right to come in here. You have no idea what's going on. Either the DJ's lives nor the tall manager's lives. Why does that even matter? Why should I care about their lives in generally? Why should I care about your life? Especially nowadays. This is the one, if ever there was a time to be selfish and to be self-centered and only look after I, 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 this is the moment. You don't, you shouldn't be caring about people because you don't want to die, do you? <laughs> anyway, this is, um, I can't speak for all, the, everyone's got the same sentence. I can't speak for other tour managers. I can't speak for other DJs, but we personally have paid our tour manager his full salary, even though we have toured for zero, for z zero for four months. And? To assume that we are not taking care of our guides is absolutely disrespectful and uncalled for. Also, to assume that every DJ up there is means in the bank is absolutely ridiculous. This is very uncalled for. <laughs> he says it again. <laughs> so, you know, someone's mad when I repeat the same sentence. And you've made something that was good intention into something negative. It's disgusting, man. You don't even know any of us. Well, that's the whole point of speculating insight. That's what makes stuff like that more fun. If I don't know you, I can hype off, I can speculate about what your intentions were what you were thinking what time of day you posted the look in your eye the fact that you bring your you know i can particularly about anything i want because i don't know you once i know you it becomes less fun because i don't want to hurt your feelings because you're my friend but when you're not my friend all bets are off um this is uncalled for you don't even know any of us any of us involved extended family literally we hang out though we actually hang out though Stay out of business of people who don't even know personally, bro. F hashtag fail. And he, he replies that if you're paying your tour manager full salary, then bravo to you. And it continues. Hey, bro, I don't know who you are, but <laughs> they're still going on. Wow, this is a mad one. And then, of course, Masha Plitz got involved. So for fuck's sake, please give your money to real charities and not to, <laughs> to rich dealers and their staff 100%. Joseph Caparati got involved here and said, as we have spoken on the phone, you're absolutely right. There is also a set of mine there that I have given to them to download and have been requested to support that, but I never understood it, was asking for my help. So I guess they're saying they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. They just got they just got a request from their tour managers to send them a mix, which is bizarre anyway, to say the least, isn't it? Like, and why would you why do why would you even need a tour manager? Can't your manager just do that? Like why do you need a, a specific tour manager? Can't your manager just do the whole thing? That does not make any sense. Like it's not as if you're going around in a band, right? Because tour managers you usually hear that sort of thing because there has to be a one point of call for the whole entire group, right? To make sure you get to places on time, you liaise with people ahead of time, you got the right equipment, da -da -da -da. you get up to go to dinner, you get to the airport or whatever, you know. Sure whatever it may be just to kind of make sure everyone's um on the go but for one individual person carrying a couple of usb sticks and some headphones and maybe a sandwich do you really need a, a separate manager tour manager to handle your affairs no wonder some of these people are begging for money online who you who get booked every weekend right because if one person domestically is doing your managing and they're getting five to ten percent then you've got another person on the continent is doing your tour managing getting five ten percent you're not left with much after taxes and all that sort of shit, are you? Really? It's mad, isn't it? Dave Cox said, there are people without the possibility to eat and definitely we are more than lucky. I've just called my tour managers for clarification. He says that these tour managers, they sound like they're fucking, they sound like they're fucking Capone, isn't it, right? They sound like they're fucking Pablo Escobar, isn't it? Like these tour managers cannot be spoken about even by name. They're just, they're just called tour managers. I think people are going to do that one day. You know, it would not be funny if everyone went to see them play live next time and wore a t-shirt with tour manager written on it. That would be jokes as a proper wind-up. <laughs> that would be an amazing troll. Um, not amazing, but it would just be funny for the moment. Of course, you know, you'll probably look like a donut after the first five minutes of acknowledgement. But, you know, we do it for the, me for the minimum dosage of lols. To continue this, it says, so sorry with all the heart to everyone with this issue. It's not my style and I never understood it was for help or my tour manager. I would never, ever give it, if ever. Apologies for the scene and people around you. See, Joseph Capirati, that's how you should, re that's how you should apologize, Martin Rivers and Seth. Don't explain away the issue. This is, it is what it is. You made a mistake. Put your hands up and keep it moving. And I like how you didn't throw his tour manager under the bus either by naming them. You just said, look, misunderstanding is what it is. We keep it moving. And then another reply here from Alan Fitzpatrick says, The tour managers in our scene are like one big dysfunctional family. A lot of our tour managers play themselves and have great musical taste. 
I'm not I'm not reading that. I'm sorry. Excuse me. We're now promote like oh, these guys are insane. And then Nicole Muda, May fifth, said the following. Do you honestly think we don't? Come on, Lenny. We thought you were a bit more astute than this. Shame on you. I love when people try and twist it around when they get public ousted and try and make you seem like the simpleton or like the doofus, isn't it? It's like, no, not really. So it's weird when people judge without basis or, or facts or knowledge. Surely you know better. No, we don't know. That's the internet. The internet is essentially there for you to judge people based on the limited information you have. That's all it is there to do. You might do it on public, you might do it in your head, you might do it to friends, but you, we all do it. To suggest that we need to have all the information or to make a, uh, any kind of take on the matter is ridiculous. And it continues here, Caparati has again says, we explained this, it was the scene manager. And okay, he's clarified there, and it was at this time manager, Andrea Fusco, of course, it's an Italian dude, of course. <laughs> we explained this, and also I don't take part of this project because I don't get my salary paid. And I need a charity. I'm sorry, but there's mis okay. I'm not reading bad, translated um Italian English, but I guess he's apologizing in some way, shape, or form. Fair enough to Andrea. Fair enough for the apology, but God damn it, man, what a shit server situation. You would hope during this whole downturn that people just you know put their phone away and stop doing videos and you know just live stream and keep things moving. Post a couple of images of themselves working out, but no. Support my DJ, please. He's he needs to eat as well. It's like give a shit um continue some good news here for the scene um cc Foss in berlin is going to reopen which is nice in a couple of other venues this is from ra um it says the following so some berlin clubs are to reopen as afternoon beer gardens with no dancing rules i thought the no dancing thing was pretty funny you know imagine trying to place that like do they have to get extra security in to make sure no one does a cheeky two-step no one kind of does a little like you know ricardo villalobos hand in the air like that twirling around right <laughs> how would you stop that sort of shit or, do you, or or does it mean no dancing standing up can you dance in your chair like you know the kind of like that or you shuffle but i thought it was pretty cool idea anyway regardless um a lot of the bars in Berlin, especially the bigger ones like CC Foss and you no, know, well, the ones with bigger out uh, outdoor areas, Kata, Blau, whatever it's called, same sort of thing. They could probably repurpose their clubs to fit in with these new rules, especially with the sun being out. I'm assuming it's great weather there at the moment. Um, usually the summers in Berlin are beautiful, so it makes more sense to you know take advantage of that. And the fact that you know they haven't got that many cases, they've handled the coronavirus thing pretty well as a nation. So why not reward them by giving them the ability to open up some places? And what what better place to start than Berlin? So this is from City First, one of the venues that will operate with a food license from this weekend. Great. So it says some places that City First opening this today, as today Saturday. I'm assuming after. Afternoon beer guys operate with food licenses. There'll be music, but no strict dancing rules. And most of the bars will close around 10 p.m., which is nice because it means you can just, you know, head off and go back home to an after hours or hang out again, get a couple more. I imagine most of the spetties will be open as well, so that makes that kind of life good as well. You'll be able to play some music from your MP3s and whatever, maybe. Um, this is according to the Berlin uh, Zeitung, however you pronounce that. About Blank has also planned so partially reopened, uh, full details are yet to be confirmed. Okay, that's great to hear, man. Again, um, that's an adequate reward. I think it goes to show just how crazy things are in the UK that we ha we are deciding to open up, even though we have maybe I don't know double the cases and deaths that, or triple the cases and deaths that Germany has, and we're thinking of doing some things and softening the, you know, the lockdown. It doesn't make any sense, really. They're way ahead of us in terms of what they're doing in Germany, and they're getting the rewards for it. And <clears throat> I will assume they'll probably abide by the rules as well to make sure they're not in a position where, you know, they have like a second or third spike because people act a bit stupid and don't keep up some uh, basic social, you know, guidelines in terms of social distancing and making sure you have a mask on without good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm there for it. And again, some light in the tunnel. I think that might be a good sign for us going forward in the UK if we do get things under control. We could be, we could see some of the bigger places or places that have the capacity to or the ability to kind of host people outside to maybe, you know, have maybe some barriers set up indoors where you can't sit down. You have to kind of like use the bar to pass in, pass out, but you can go and hang out in a bar, in a beer garden. Because quite a lot of weather spins are like that, right? They usually buy bigger buildings and they usually have quite big garden spaces. I know they have a few in my area, 
area like that and a few independent pubs as well have this sort of like weird indoor gazebo things that you can use so there is a bit of room for that to happen and hopefully that might mean that a few of our independent spots will stay open once everything's finished as well that'd be nice instead of reopening and we've only got spoons around you i mean no one wants that i know i don't i know i don't cool so what is next is here ba, 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 ba. what's going to talk about da, 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 da. primavera is um postponed unfortunately which is a shame because this would have been their 20th anniversary on 2020 so it would have set up really nicely you know for the marketing purposes i'm sure they had a whole slew of material they were waiting to get out there and push but you know um life threw them a little bit of a curveball but they've handled this stuff really well compared to other places that have kind of been a bit you know they've acted a bit of a scumbag way but they've announced it here on ra they said Primavera is the latest uh, festival to postpone this 2020 edition in light of the global coronavirus pandemic following the Spanish government's restrictions on large-scale events throughout the summer. Uh, the festival has confirmed it's not holding a festival this year. The 2021 will be set um, to be the 20th anniversary. Instead, the next edition will take place June 2nd through June 6th next year, 2021. In a statement, it said the following. It's down below here. Let's read this. It says, Today, we've announced the most difficult decision in history. Uh, finally, we will not be able to celebrate 20th anniversary June 2020 in the face of the evolution of the COVID-19. We are devastated and are terribly sorry for the inconvenience caused, but the health and well-being of our festival gods as people involved. This festival has always been and still is our absolute priority. We cannot thank you enough for patience, love and understanding in certain uncertain terms, uncertain scenarios. Sorry. I have to say as well, because obviously some people always say this sort of thing about love for their fans and people that go there for a big festival for a festival that has a lot of big corporate sponsorships and you know it's a bit of a juggernaut the times that i've been i have felt a lot of care and attention for people that are there um they really give a fuck right um you don't you still don't see people getting too moldy or too fucked up there's always somebody in hand loads of uh, medical help loads of places to get water loads of places to get refreshments and food and shit and just generally a really cool easy laid back vibe like you could easily go there buy your merch to premium i'm saying listen to a couple of bands you know um have a little twirl and go home and you would see none of the madness and if you want to see the madness and you want to get a bit leery move closer to the front get into the speakers go somewhere where it's a bit dark and people are getting into all sorts of nonsense and you'll see all the freak shit but if you want to just hang out you can quite easily there and i like that kind of vibe about it i think that's part of what makes it a really cool place to go to and um i'm not surprised that they dealt with it in such a cool way because it seems like you know they're actually run by adults not in terms of age but in terms of just maturity they don't they're not treating this as some sort of like cowboy operation and they're also aware that i guess because some festivals are not doing that some festivals are sort of like burning their bridges now not knowing or without any foresight that this thing will pass and people will remember the people that were shitty right they'll remember who treated them poorly and you know word travels fast on the interwebs so you're you know you basically ruin your reputation for what for the sake of not giving people refunds makes no sense this is the following said um so they said here in a statement prima said all tickets that have been bought will be valid for the next year's festival and will include a special benefit for those who decide to keep which is awesome right but it says as well as the option it will also be possible to request a refund for those purchase tickets from next wednesday june 3rd so nice and clear if you want to keep it you can and it will make it allowed to go to the next one for next year which i'm sure they're gonna you know everyone and their mum's gonna want to play that one right regardless of what they get paid um but if you want to keep it but if you want to sell it and get your money back so if you're in a tight place you can easily request a refund from wednesday june 3rd onwards no no delay no stress um but other places you know they're ignoring people's emails they're like i think it was rolling loud portugal in it right they just put out a statement saying we've postponed it if you want to resell your ticket you can but that's it like <laughs> effectively you've kind of like wasted your money this is um on that same day we'll announce the first artist for Pure 2021 which is great i love that I lo again i love the synergy i love the profession of it 
they got, you can request a refund that day but they're also going to let you know who's topping the bill for the next year's festival which is great because it puts you in a bit of a predicament you know do I press refund or just keep it for next year if it was me I'd keep it I've always been that kind of way I think if you buy tickets for an event and you don't end up going just just sell just either sell them on if you can or give them away I usually try and give mine away I'll usually just search on Twitter if somebody wanted to go to an event I'll just send them my fucking um, screen you know my um, e-ticket on my phone and let them use it because um, you've already made the commitment to go you gave people the money what are you going to do you're going to ask for a refund from the promoter it's a big gauge you know I mean just give it something else to enjoy um, the lineup will celebrate the 20th anniversary of the festival embracing the best festival ever philosophy we are counting on you to make this happen until then please take good care of yourselves and follow the advice of the authorities at all times the festival team continues to work intensively in order to be able in 2021 to celebrate something more than just pretty very sound 20th anniversary meeting and dance together again yeah that's gonna be beautiful in the bus on the sun dancing to your favorite band Oof, can't wait to see that one um so yeah congrats to them for doing a good job definitely check them out if you want to get a refund and all that stuff and keep an eye on the lineup because things may change what else is on the list here i want to speak about Europe is opening up. I think that what was that? It's a video about Europeans opening up the seas. This is France returning to action. Today, the nation's stations were open again. To start, there we go. Boom. France returning to action. Today, the nation's stations were open again. Masks are now mandatory here and familiar across Europe. French travellers are exempt from Britain's quarantine plans. The lockdown has been eased, but not removed. Still, for some, a metro journey felt like a big step forward. It's a bit strange to take the subway again, but we have to get used to it again. I wonder if they're going to do that in the UK once everything opens up. Would they be giving away free surgical masks on the trains? I've got a feeling they won't be doing that, right? Every year, you know, without, I don't know, maybe last year was one of the exceptions. Ticket prices, or used to car prices go up and up and up. Seasonal tickets just go up. You know, it's just ridiculous. You have to pay to get around. So I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm a little bit unsure as to whether they're going to be giving punters like me and you a <laughs> free little surgical mask on the train in the morning to go to work i don't think they're gonna do that but if they do that'd be pretty great but it'll be a pretty gnarly experience to be on a central line somewhere and be surrounded by people all covered in like blue masks black masks sunglasses paper bags and shit in belgium shops reopened in the sunshine people queuing patiently to get in this country has been very badly hit by the virus today you could sense the desire to get back to normal things But I guess we'll have to get used to it. Here in Brussels, there was a one-way system for shoppers. Those curves on the floor mark out the mandatory distance gap. But as we watched, the guidelines were often ignored. That's funny, right? The lady there with the with the mask on is just underneath. Mandatory distance gap. 
because it is uncomfortable to wear right everyone knows that you know you don't actually want to wear a mask but it's just funny how that's that's become like the standard way of wearing it nowadays like just over your mouth underneath your nose which is you know defeats the whole purpose but hey but as we watched the guidelines were often ignored the lesson here is that shopping doesn't really mix well with strict social distancing Duh. This might look like an everyday visit to the shops, but don't be tricked by the illusion because there are limits on how many people can go into each store, how long they can remain there, how they can pay for their purchases, and bits of these shops have been closed off. So the question isn't whether or not this is a return to normality. It's more about how long are we going to have to live like this? There is you shouldn't, I don't, I keep, that's the redundant question. We don't know how long we have to live like this, but really, like after everything that's gone on, your first port of call is to go and shop until you drop, especially in high streets where you're surrounded by, you know, people pumping out, you know, fast fashion items that are mostly made in the country that the virus originated in. So if you are afraid of your health, it might not be the best place to go to. And just generally for your general mental health and sanity, is the first port of call to go to a busy high street indoors um bright lights surrounded by strangers is that really the best place for you to be and then those very same people will be the ones who will be like oh, i don't want to go back to work because it's too dangerous but you're willing to go to fucking primark come on there is nervousness too some bus and tram drivers were on strike today fearful that lockdown restrictions have been lifted too quickly elsewhere relief this is severe in Spain, where bars and cafes are slowly opening. Businesses in now that's worth it, right? That's worth going out again. Severe in this? Spain, where bars and cafes are slowly. See that old man is sitting down in Sevilla, in Spain. Look at that, sitting down by himself with a nice glass of beer. And I think a bar like this with an outside space that you're only able to sit one or two people at one table might be an advantage because some of the time when you go to these places the tables are such prime real estate that you're worried that a stranger might sit next to you just because they want any kind of seat so it gives you the peace of mind that no one's going to sit next to you anyway so that's one of the places that you want to go to i'd run if they had something like this next to me open i'd run to it i'd run to it often that's where you'd want to go but to a fucking shop come on he's under shade he's got his cool little old man hat on he's got his white gloves you know what i mean just hanging out really opening businesses in desperate need of money now hoping for customers the players of real madrid back in training hoping that their league will restart in june but there is one trade now facing an influx of clients hairdressers have re yeah i'm a surprise i need one sooner rather than later but again I'd, I'd, i'm still going to give it a couple of weeks before you know they get their razors restarted warm the place up again get the verb flushed in and out of the place but bloody hell that's the first part and i've never really been the the most um i don't know i've never been the most on top with it comes to haircuts i get them when i get them i don't keep a like timetable when i get them like other boys do but bloody hell this has taught me a lesson returned in the netherlands and beyond a lot of us seem desperate to say goodbye to our unruly Lockdown locks. Adam Parsons, Sky News. Yeah. That's a great way to end it, man. Let's hopefully know that we can get the haircut soon. That'll be the best place to end things, man. We will come back out of it with a trim again. That'll be beautiful to see. But anyway, we are done and we are out. Thanks so much for tuning in. I think the camera stopped for some reason there, but hey, we're back. Shows over now anyway. Thanks again for tuning in. This is the Excellent English Show episode number what three one three I think for the most part. So again, if you want a more information regarding myself, make sure you get the link down below. Um, more links there regarding the stuff that I do, mixes, blogs, and all that stuff will be there for you to find. Until then, take care, be safe. <sighs>